Welcome. In a previous video, we introduced the topic of graph theory. We're going to continue on learning more about graph theory in this video, and specifically, we're going to learn about trees. So a tree is a particular type of graph. One of the definitions that we need to talk about a tree is a cycle. And there's some other definitions in graph theory that are very similar or close to what we define a cycle as. So we're going to go through those ones, a walk, a trail, a path, a circuit, and lead up to the cycle. So we start out by talking about a subgraph. So if you take all of the vertices in a graph and you make a subset of those vertices, you can build a, a graph with those subset of vertices. And as long as you build a proper graph, meaning that all of the edges end at vertices, you get what we call a subgraph. So taking a graph and building a subgraph out of that, as long as that new thing is also a graph and all of the vertices and edges came from the original graph, then you've built a subgraph. So it's time to talk about certain types of subgraphs. So we'll start with a walk. So with a walk, you can picture yourself on the graph, let's say you're at vertex one, and you can walk along the edges however you like. There's no particular rule from edge to vertex. You can walk around the graph however you want. You can repeat the vertices, you can repeat the edges, and you build a walk. So moving along to a trail, things get a little bit more restrictive. We can no longer repeat edges within our walk. So if we started at one, we could go from one to two, but then we couldn't go back from two to, to one, at least directly. But you could go three, one. We haven't repeated any edges at that point. We went one to two, to three, to one. We've used this edge, this edge, and that edge. So we can continue along our path if you like, introducing new edges, going down to five maybe, as long as we don't repeat any edges, we've successfully made a trail. Okay, so the next definition, a path, is the most restrictive of the, the walks. So a path, you can't repeat edges or vertices. So if we start at vertex 1, we could do something like 1 to 2, and then to 3, and let's say we went to 6, and then to 4, we'd kind of be stuck at 4 because we couldn't go to 2 or to 6 because we've been there already because the path went like that. And there's, of course, many other options as long as we don't repeat any edges or any vertices. So we'll move along to the circuit. The circuit is a trail, so it picks up with the definition of a trail and says the trail has its first and last vertices being the same place. All right, so let's try to draw in a trail. Take out my green pen. Let's say we're starting at one and we're traveling along the graph. So we have to return back to one and we cannot repeat any of the edges. So maybe we could do to two and then to six, and then to four, and then back to two, three, five, and one. So that would be a possible trail. So finally, we would like to talk about a cycle. We've been building all the way up to the cycle. So this one is a path. So we pick up on the definition of a path. And we do allow uh, that one exception where the first and last vertice could be the same. Normally in a path, the vertices can't be repeated, but for the cycle, we allow for that purpose to return back to where we started, but there's no other repeating of the, the vertices. So if we wanted to draw a cycle, maybe we'll start at one again, and we could do one to three to, to six, and from here, we couldn't go to, to four. We couldn't do that because then there would be no way to get back to one 
without doing repeats. So if we did that, we'd have to go five and then one. And remember, it's a subgraph, so you don't have to use all the vertices. Like you could skip vertex four if you like. All right, so now we're ready to build up our definition of a tree. Just one more definition to go. And that's the definition of being connected. So we call a graph connected if it's all in one clump. So if every vertex is joined to another vertex by a path, then you say that it's on a connected component of the graph. If there's just one connected component in your graph, then you say that the entire graph is connected. Another way to think about this definition of being connected, let's say you had a graph that was represented by uh, beads and the beads were connected to other beads with a string representing the edges. If you were to pick any one of those beads up or at any point pick the string up, the whole graph would come up and nothing would be left down on your table. Okay, so finally we've reached our definition of a tree. So a tree is a graph such that any two vertices, so you pick any vertex u and any other vertex v, it could be any vertices in the entire graph, there has to be a path and there has to be exactly one path that joins the two vertices. So for every pair, there's exactly one path that joins those two vertices. Let's try to draw down some examples of some trees. So let's say we have a, a vertex. I guess that could be a tree. There's just one vertex, so it meets the conditions. Now, as we add another vertice, we must add an edge between those vertices. Every time you add an edge, you also must add a vertex. You can't add an edge returning to a previous vertex. That won't work because you know, now you have a situation where you have a choice of which path to build between you know, any two of those vertices. You could go you know, the, the, the short way around or the long way around, but there's only supposed to be one path that joins each pair of vertices. So we cannot and you'll have a new edge without drawing a new vertex. So as you keep drawing out your, uh, your graph, it kind of looks like how branches grow on a tree. So I suppose that's why we called this object a tree. So if you end up with more than one tree growing along, we call that a forest if they're on disconnected parts of your graph. And they don't have to match. You can have a forest with three trees and the trees could be you know, completely different as well. All right, so we're ready for our first discovery about trees. There are three properties of trees that we should discuss. Building on the definition that we just talked about, we said a tree has exactly one path between every pair of vertices. So that means directly that it must be connected because we can travel along that path. So since we can go from any vertex to any other vertex through that path, it must be connected. Also, there's no cycles. Remember we learned what a cycle was earlier in the video? We said that a cycle is this loop that returns back to where it started and doesn't repeat edges or vertices. So we can't have a cycle because then there would be a choice of you know, one way around the cycle or the other way around the cycle to form a path, but there's only one path between every pair of vertices. So if the graph has a cycle, then for any two vertices on the cycle, we can go from one to the other in at least two ways, which is a contradiction because there's only supposed to be one way to, to go, not two. So there are no cycles. And then finally, we'll prove this last point about trees. It satisfies something called the tree formula. So the tree formula says 
that there's always one more vertice than the number of edges. So if you take the total number of edges and you add one, you get the number of vertices. So one more vertex than the number of edges in a tree. So let's try to prove that idea. As we were drawing the graphs above, we kind of already noticed that. If you're drawing a graph, you really need to have a vertex to begin with. And then as you're adding edges to this graph, we must draw down a new vertex. So if we count the number of edges and vertices, there's one more vertex than the number of edges. Every time you add an edge, you must add a new vertex. If you viewed it the other way around, if you added a new vertex, it must connect back to one of the you know, existing um, vertices that are, that are there because we have to have a path that, that joins it. And we've already talked about how it has to be connected. So again, every time you introduce a new vertex, you need a new edge or, or vice versa. How about we say it as drawing a new edge in our graph must produce a new vertex. And that's our proof. It's a very short and sweet proof. So in words, we have starting with that one vertex to begin with. Every time you add an edge, you must join that to a new vertex, as in all of the diagrams that we looked at before. So what that means is, you know, if we start with one you know, vertex, and then you start adding edges, every time you add an edge, you must add another vertex to go along with that edge. So there's always one more vert vertex than the number of edges. Okay, so something else that's kind of interesting about these three properties that we just discussed. If you're trying to do a problem and you've discovered that you have a graph, but you don't necessarily know that that graph is a tree, you can also use these properties to help you out there. So if you have something that's a graph and you have two of these three properties, you can conclude that that graph is indeed a tree. So I call this the two out of three is a tree theorem. So if properties one and two are true, if it's connected and it has no cycles, then the tree formula is true and you have a tree. If it has no cycles and the tree formula is true, then it's connected and you have a tree. Or the final combination if it would be connected and you found out that the tree formula is true, you know that that graph has no cycles and it is a tree. So if you don't know if you have a tree necessarily to begin with, this theorem is very helpful to get you to discover that your graph is indeed a tree. The previous theorem we were discussing something slightly different, although it looks very similar. Above we were discussing that if you have a tree to begin with, so if we know that our graph is a tree, meaning that there's exactly one path between every pair of verte vertices, then these properties are true. Below, we're saying we don't necessarily know that we have a tree. We're saying that a graph is a tree if two of these properties are true. All right, thanks so much for listening. In the next video, we'll put all of these ideas together about trees into a specific problem called the kids in the chocolate bar problem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you on the next one.